Yeah, no, I totally agree because uh, when uh, you go back to when you were doing the Indian uh, Inter uh, uh, Department of Interior, the Indian, uh, when I made some phone calls to some of the people uh, in the uh, Indian nation, uh, they are going after the lease agreement, which was the original treaty with their uh, uh, particular Indian race, and they're going back and are uh, being honored by the United States to pay those leases up. So there you go. You got it right on the head of the nail. And see, our lease agreement is the Constitution. So when we stand in Admiralty, we have them, okay? They're operating in maritime law, and admiralty and maritime law is two different things. Mm -hmm. okay? They're not the same thing. That's what most people are under, operating under misconception that they're the same. They're not, okay? Admiralty is called out in the Constitution, where maritime law is not. Maritime law came about uh, after the 14th Amendment or that Weaver Code out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's when that started coming into effect. Okay? And, but, uh, now, we file these in, and basically you take all your receipts and stuff, do a B-10, I guess, like Walmart or uh, Costco or whoever, and uh, put a inheritance claim in against them because they're using our assets, our inheritance out there as collateral. Now, to enforce that, how do you enforce a tax? Put a levy on them. <laughs> no, a tax lien. Well, yeah, basically the same thing, yeah. Well, but it's, yeah, it's a tax lien. See, the IRS never could claim a tax lien against our fictional person. They could do it against an EIN number account, but they never could do it against uh, our fictional person just operating under a social security note. And there's a, there, he is only a quasi-corporation. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't voluntary. Yeah. Now, so, and, the, and their notice of tax lien is really a notice for you to come and collect your taxes. We have to turn around and do a B-10 against that and collect that amount from the United States corporation that owes the inheritance tax or the estate tax back to us. Now, are they cooperating? They're oh, they're, they're actually saying that that's the way to do it? That's what they're, yeah, that's what they're really trying to tell us here. Mm. We're giving you a notice to come and collect your taxes. Would, have you uh, have you looked at the the uh, what do they call it the generation skip tax uh, form because I found that doesn't come into play. Uh, well, I did find out that uh, they got a section in there that you can put all your receipts down for rece receiving your funds that you have out of pocket. Uh, they they have a whole section on it, and that includes your registration, all the franchises. Uh, all your receipts you've got that has accumulated that came out of your pocket is honored by filing that paper. Yes, but basically that is all for the corporations. Okay, that's not for us as the living creditor, owner, and uh, uh, device E. We do the B-10 as the creditor, file that in the bankruptcy court, and let the trustee in that bank and see, that's all that that bankruptcy court is. It's a independent treasury bank for the United States Corporation. Okay. So, in other words, everybody, everybody's been uh, really played out uh, and put just the opposite of what it really should be. We should be walking in as the creditor, and the United States is the one that's under bankruptcy. And it does make sense that's because... Right. Yep. Because... Yes. B BLT, you remember Mike uh, Horde, right? He he kept saying, "How can you file a bankruptcy on bankruptcy? You can't do it." So what you're saying is that 
just change the words a little bit, you're the creditor coming in on their bankruptcy. That's right. They're all bankrupt. We're not. And that's what just pissed me off back in 2005 when I went in and said, how in the fuck can I really go into bankruptcy? I'm just trying to set this damn thing off. Yep. And basically, uh, I didn't know how to do it, but it had to go through that bankruptcy court to set that thing off. Yep. Well, it does give me some ideas to be able to talk to you about this, uh, it, it, because you know I'm kind of like in transit with moving and stuff like that, and I don't I don't really put a lot of time in research when I'm go in transit. So, but it, it's good that you are talking this because I I totally agree. I agree with the fact that yeah. we, we should not have to file bankruptcy on top of a bankruptcy. It is our mistake. Yeah, and we come in in Admiralty, and they keep. We, in the letter that we send in, uh, along with that D10 form and uh, our checkmate and uh, uh, our in, uh, inventory list or whatever, or like all of our receipts, on the letter we also place on there that if this is not fulfilled, we will file a tax lien against this bankruptcy court, bankruptcy court, corporation, the administrator of this corporation, the cashier of this corporation, and the trustee slash CFO of this corporation. Yeah. I like and it. Basically, yep. uh, we will file a $200 million uh, claim against this court for depriving us of our rights and assets. <laughs> No, I like it. I, I like the idea because I can go with that. And the reasons why I can go with it is because I have already worked that paperwork. I've worked those considerations. And it's just a matter of applying it. And even if you made a mistake by filing bankruptcy as a defendant or a the person that's in bankruptcy, you can always file that I've made a mistake and just withdraw that. Yeah, but see, we're... We will never file any of the other bankruptcy forms except for the B-2. The B-2 form, yeah. we file that one to basically terminate our fictional bankrupt uh, trade name. Yeah, yeah. And see, he's just a quasi-corporation anyway. Yeah, he's basically considered uh, unincorporated because you haven't stepped up as the uh, age of majority as to make it official that it is. So therefore, they're waiting for you to accept it as a corporation. But as long as you don't, they can only go so far uh, without your consent. And there you go. You've got your B2. Yeah, and we can, we're the owner of that corporation. We can terminate that corporation any time. Yeah. And then we move it over to... And the best thing to do is take Godfather as your first name and your trade name and uh, your last name. So Godfather, like in my case, Godfather Divine, private enterprise, a state. You do not want a trust because the state can still attack a trust, but they can't attack an enterprise, a state. All right, well, I'm going to hold a reservation on that one, but uh, that's okay. Go ahead. No, it's all in the dictionary if you look it up, okay? Yeah. The state cannot touch an enterprise. Yep, yep. Well, I'll have to get but caught up But they can come after a trust, and they've done it constantly. Yeah. People think that they're protected by these private trusts and all these other special trusts and everything else, and lo and behold, a couple of years down the road <laughs> and shit, the state's coming in after them. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, basically, it's Oops. in the law that basically the state can uh, has jurisdiction over trust. Because a trust has to be registered with the state, where an enterprise does not have to be registered. It can be recorded at the county. As a gaddy? At the county you live in. Oh, county. You go down and, and you just record that in the private. Yeah. And then you put everything that you own into that private enterprise estate. 
Yeah, I have a question about that. Uh, so you, you've confirmed for yourself that there's a private side to the recorder's office, right? Yes. Where do you go find those files? Basically, you just walk in there and say, I want to do this private filing. No, no, no. I'll just I already did it with a trust. No, no, no. He walked in there and basically they filed it in the private side, but still, it's a trust, and they have the in the trust, but the state still came after him on that vehicle for the license and everything else because it was in that trust. How do you go back to the county and get any of the private filings? You haven't got any private filings right now. I'm asking you a question, Pat. How do you go back to the county recorder's clerk and ask them for private filings and recordings that you've done in the past? It's all under your name. You're the owner, and basically they have a private filing over okay. there. All right. And they will give you a copy of that private filing under your trade name, your new trade name. Yeah. Like the files under uh, Godfather Divine Private Enterprise Estate. Do they? And then I would add, I would add the vehicles, my property, and everything else, uh, and update that file. Okay, so they have one number, one file number that has all these different documents, or do they give a unique identifying filing number for each of the documents that you file? It would be a book filing of some sort. I haven't gone in there and done this, but basically that's the way it would be. And I've heard this from a couple different sources uh, about private filings, but I never really did pursue it in this regard. I will be trying to pursue it this next week. Yeah, well, the reason why I'm asking you this stuff is because I have also, uh, over the last few years, have had private filings and did not have the information of how to go back and get these private filings. Now, you've got to come in under the name that you filed it under. Got it. All right. That's that's good enough right there. Uh, yeah, see, it's all under yeah. a name. It's not under a number. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, that's uh, that's actually pretty impressive. Uh, I was uh, kind of poking around looking uh, at the statutes that created the Federal Registry, and one of the first statements that they open up in their introduction of the purpose of the Federal Registry is for any entity that wishes to change their status and classification is that it will be reviewed by the reviewed uh, uh, administrative agency as to correct the status and, and to correct the classification of how they can uh, apply any of the federal registry. And I said, wow, <laughs> I just... I could not believe my eyes that you can actually change your status and classification just by the Federal Registry giving them notice. It was that what, big. Trustee, who's supposed to do that? Well, whoever your wants bankruptcy to... bankruptcy trustee. Your district bankruptcy trustee. When you order him to terminate your trade name, your birth certificate trade name, and all associated... Pawns and Pawnees under that trade name. He is the trustee that has to basically terminate or follow up on the termination of that. It's sort of like Arnold Schwarzenegger in uh, the movie Eraser. They can go in and basically at the flip of a switch on the damn computer erase you completely out of the system. Yeah. Trans transfer your assets over to a new name, to a new trade name. Yeah. And yeah. that would all be in the private there, especially if you make it a private enterprise estate. Yeah. And see, the state cannot... They're an enterprise themselves, and basically they cannot infringe upon another enterprise. They yep. can't even operate in the same capacity as an enterprise that's down here. Yep. 
Yeah, because it would be a... It would be an intrusion on private uh, uh, private contracts. Right. So, yeah, at least they honor that. Uh, for some reason, there's a couple things that I've noticed that uh, the government will honor. And uh, if you've got a private contract, uh, you can't interfere with that. But, uh, <clears throat> like, say, for instance, uh, you can most certainly interfere if they're trespassing into your private enterprise. Uh, if they take and tow your vehicle, if they take and tow your yeah. vehicle, and there's no nexus contract or an agreement, now they've just done a commercial trespass. Right. And the only way you can basically get restitution is to put a come in and file a tax lien or a tax claim against them. Yeah. And then basically file a tax lien against them, and basically against their bond. And also, if their bond is not enough, you will go after their private ass ex. <laughs> well, that You're was still... their fucking ass. Yeah, no, I, I, I went. I, I've done all the paperwork. I, I'm just laughing because I agree with you. <laughs> um. All right. <sighs> uh, see, we file this when we file this tax lien. Okay, and we do it in admiralty. Then we take it across the aisle or across to the other end of the building, like here in Iowa. You got the bankruptcy on one side of the block. You turn around and go in the door on the other side of the block, and you're going into the federal district court. We go into that court uh, and basically turn that in. Uh, hey, we've got a tax lien here against this. Now, they can't, work. we've done this in Admiralty, they can't have a bar card person represent them in that court. Okay. That's uh, the beauty about Admiralty. Okay. Um, bar members can come in. Because I haven't dealt with Admiralty uh, that often, and uh, I, I'm just begging the question here is, okay, I know that the Constitution has a couple provisions in there of jurisdiction under Admiralty, but can you repeat to me right now what it what you're thinking is Admiralty and how you as a private individual can actually go after them under Admiralty. See, Admiralty is our court system, okay? Yeah, the right. The first five letters of Admiralty are what? Admir. Uh-huh. Admir is the prince of a sultan. Uh-huh. Did you uh, lower your volume? I can't hear you, Pat. You, you turned down your volume or something. Maybe you snapped out your mic. I don't know what happened, but I can, I can hear you back there, but I, I can't. You're not at the volume level. I'm recording this for other people so they can hear it. No, still very, very faint, low why don't you just call me back? Just, just, just redial. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Go ahead. We're talking about Admiralty. Okay, Admiralty is addressed in the Constitution. Right. And see, Admiralty. The first five letters of Admiralty are Admir. A D M I R. Uh huh. That is the word for a prince of a sultan. A sovereign, a god, or a king. All right. Okay, as an admir. Okay. Okay, and we are as we were born of the land of the United States of America. We are the princes of the land in this country. Okay. Okay. So that's our court. you see in all their definitions, it's admiralty and maritime jurisdiction. So they you're saying that mar think ma that they're the same thing. They're not. They're two different words all right. saying two different jurisdictions. But I don't remember the Declaration of Independence having any contents of admiralty in it. No, but basically it guaranteed everybody the right of liberty Okay, 
but the Constitution was a will for the people. The founding fathers were the device oars. The Constitution was the device, and we are the device ease. We're the beneficiaries of that Constitution. That's right. Yeah, no, I, I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Now, and if we don't get everything into admiralty, they take it into maritime, which basically wipes out the Constitution altogether. Okay, so ba basically you had uh, iterated that uh, the maritime came in basically related to the uh, the martial law or uh, the well, reorganization. The labor code and yeah. the 14th Amendment. Yeah, the, the reorganization area. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, See, that also complies with what the, the book uh, that was written in 1851 uh, that was telling exactly what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And that book, you're going to, and it, see, they already had the black man pretty much enslaved, okay, at that point in time. And they had the Indians, the red men, on the reservations. Yeah, which is just okay. another slave camp. <laughs> and they see the uh, Chinese or uh, whatever, the Asians. They were all basically coming over here in indentured servitude. So, who did they want to go after? They wanted to go after the white whale, the American white man. And the book was Moby Dick. Yeah. And see, that's what they've been doing is whaling. How do you kill a whale? When you harpoon it, you don't kill it. You only pull it in, and then you start stripping everything away from it. And when you're done, the whale may still be alive, and you just let it go. Yeah. I mean, that whaling is the most inhumane way to kill a person or a whale itself. Well, the Indians used to use it all the time, stripping all the the outer tissue off of people and then burning them so they they know they know pain too it's not just limited to the whiteies but, um, but see, that's what they've been doing they've been nibbling at our ass all along well no they sacked they us away we, our assets. yeah they've taken everything away from us uh, you know what kind of a government that represents the people do that to their people I mean it can't be it, it, all the bankers and uh, the damn water association. Yep. Yep. Yeah, but see, now we have the means. We know that we have two taxes that we have the right to collect. And see, even Jesus was a tax collector. It calls it out in the Bible that Matthew, I think, was the tax collector of the disciples. Well, the disciples were really different personas of Jesus. Yeah. Most people don't fully comprehend that, but basically that's the way it had to be. And uh, then uh, he was the tax collector. And see, he could collect the taxes. He was collecting his inheritance and his estate taxes. And then he terminated there at uh, Calvary, or at uh, the final day, uh, his uh, corporate, uh, quasi-corporation uh, trade name person and got rid of him and got all his assets. And see, that's what he tried to show us, the way in the path in this whole damn process. And so we turn around and we file, uh, like, you want a new vehicle? You turn around, you get the window sticker, you do a B2 or a B10 form in, and you claim that vehicle as inheritance tax. You're not going to get the value, but basically the trustee is going to have to go over and send a check over to the uh, car dealership and give you that car. Um, 
All right, you know I've got to I've got to get going. Uh, I'm starting to lose okay. my my marbles over here. But uh, well, you know I I do agree with what you're you're talking about. I think that uh, you know we're getting closer to understanding this stuff. Uh, it's just that I'm right in transit right now, trying to put my life together. I have uh, very get little to. Chance. Get a chance. Take a look at tax filing a tax lien, and you would either file an estate tax lien or an inheritance. Well, uh, did you put any papers uh, together and send them over to Thomas, or what's going on with that particular no, area? Not the tax lien, yeah. I, okay. I put the filings in the B10 and everything else up on the file uh, into the court about the inheritance yeah. coming in. Uh, I mean, they're about receipts. You can see all receipts are inheritance tax because they've been using our inheritance. A corporation has to borrow. They have to zero their books at the end of the year. So they have to borrow money, and where do they borrow from? Or the United States of America Treasury, by placing a lien using uh, our accounts and everything, access to uh, file a lien uh, against the Treasury assets as, as collateral, then they can write the bonds that they're operating with. Well, I think it's kind of, when you put B2 in there, uh, it's kind of funny, but uh, you've got, uh, they've got a B2 form at the Bureau of Consul uh, Consular Affairs. Uh, they've got one over at Immigration. They've got one, uh, no, let's see. No, we only want the bankruptcy. We're, this is a bank. We need to go to the bank. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm just saying that I, when I put, put in looking for the yeah. form, it came up with these other forms. That's yeah. kind of ironic. But, uh, and she... Uh, the B-2 form in bankruptcy is either, uh, it goes back to William Shakespeare, to be or not to be. Well, you he, come he, in, and I don't want to be that fictional person anymore. I'm going to set up my own private enterprise. Well, here's the, here, here's the IRS's Schedule B, interest in ordinary dividends. <laughs> We don't, yeah, we don't deal with the IRS on this either. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just throwing this stuff out to you because I think it's kind of interesting yeah. what B actually, uh, okay. what it actually means here. Thank you. Okay, well, we'll talk to you later. Guys. All right, uh, yeah, you have a good day, okay. and thanks for calling. Yeah, bye. Uh -huh, bye bye. Keep them in the system, keep them in the system, keep them in the system.